Hello, y'all. Welcome, welcome to Meditation Mondays. Make sure you guys are sharing this video as you are coming on. Hallelujah. Give a few more people time to come on. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome guys to Meditation Monday. We're going to go ahead and get started. So as you guys are coming on, please be sure to share, share, share this video. We want you guys to share the video so that we can get the word out. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. So as you guys are coming on, please be sure to share, share this video. We want to get the word out. We want to get the word of God out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Make sure you're sharing this video as you come on. Hallelujah. So as you guys are coming on, please be sure to share, share, share this video. Share this video. Hallelujah. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sierra Howard, and this is Meditation Monday. Meditation Monday is normally a time that we just come together and we have a scripture every week that we meditate on. And it's just a time that we come in and we break bread. We just, you know, just go into the word and I share with you guys um, what the Lord shares with me when I have my time of study. So this is like a mini Bible study. So welcome, guys. Welcome to Meditation Monday. So we're going to go ahead and go right into the recap. Um, the scripture for last week was James 4 and 7. And it declares, submit yourselves therefore to God, but resist the devil and he will flee. And so in that we talked about submission. Submission is the act or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another. And so we talked about the role of a watchman how a watchman has the role to to watch to keep watch and they are obviously submitted to the king and whatever the king wants to do right and so we talked about signs of being non-submissive and i shared a few things with um with you guys about my experience my first year of being married my first year going into marriage and how I was learning how to be submiss submissive to my husband and learning, you know, things that were disrespectful that I thought that was okay. And so if you have not watched, um, if you have not caught up with that, go back and watch the replay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and go and get started. So if you want to title this message, we can, go, we're going to title it, how to let God fight your battles. And so our scripture for this week is exodus um 14 and 14 and it declares the lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent and calm hallelujah and so i looked up the definition for fight the definition for fight is violent struggle a battle or a brawl involving physical blows or weapons so you guys do understand that there are some fights you have to fight and there are some fights that we have to give to god Hallelujah. And so we also, one thing I want to get into, I want us to understand. I want us to understand who our enemy is. I want us all to understand who our enemy is. Who is the enemy? Who is the enemy? 
Our enemy is not people. Our enemy is not people that we see every day. People that have may have pissed us off or people that, you know, that even want to see us do bad, right? Our enemy is the, the, the things that we can't see, the spirits that we can't see. And so the enemy is Satan. The enemy is the devil. The enemy, the Bible declares that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. How does he do that? The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy by way of people. He uses people who are submitted to his works. So we have an enemy, but the enemy is not the person that's performing. That's actually that's actually being that's yielding themselves to um, the works of darkness. Right. So that's one thing we as people of God have to understand is our enemies are not people. Our enemies are not people. Our enemy is the devil and the fallen his uh, the fallen angels, his imps. Right me behind the person right and so our weapon what is our weapon our weapon is our mouths our weapon is our mouths and sometimes our weapon can either be it could be a, it could be life or death the bible says that life and death is in the power of our tongue and so as the scripture stated in exodus 14 and 14 it says that the lord will fight for us and all we have to do is be silent right all we have to do is be silent. And so there comes a time when you are in the battle that you have to keep your mouth shut. You have to be quiet because sometimes when we open up our mouth, our mouth will literally cause us to forfeit the battle. Right. Have you ever have you ever known somebody to prepare for a battle or prepare for a fight and they go and tell the enemy what they're about to do? Oh, we got bombs. We got grenades. We got we got AK-47s. We got all of this stuff that we about to blow y'all up with. Have you ever seen or heard something like that no right so there are times that god will encourage you to be quiet to be still don't say a word and so even in that i feel like god is so he's so strategic and he's just he's a he's such a man full of wisdom because we all know that when we about to get in a fight i don't know if y'all i know that most of us have probably got into an argument or something with someone and we were so heated we were so heated and then you know in the moment of when you're heated and you're mad you become you your, your thinking becomes irrational you don't think properly how you would normally think if you weren't mad and so there are times god will encourage us to be silent sit still so you can think this thing through so you can see how to strategize how to come against the works of darkness and not necessarily against the person right and so god is saying to most of us be still I, I'll fight this battle, but I need you to be silent. I need you to shut your mouth. I need you to close your mouth. I need you to silence your mouth so I can fight on your behalf. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so when we're mad, when we're mad, um, sometimes we want to satisfy our flesh. And so that's, that's another thing I believe the Lord wants us to wants us to be silent wants us to be silent so that he can fight because there are times i'm gonna be honest with y'all that i got so mad i was ready to ready to just do my thing i was just ready to respond in a way that was not godly just respond in the way just mainly to satisfy my flesh and so god doesn't want us to satisfy our flesh because we're people of God we are we are people of God we have to represent ourselves as people of God we can't respond any old way we can't we can't just toss God out the window or uh, toss our Holy Ghost out the window and then try to bring them back in we can do that but there comes a time where we can't we can't respond all the time because the devil man he wants to he 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 wants you to to respond in the way that you normally would respond to people but there should come a time where we we don't continue in these cycles. We don't allow the enemy to pull us into these cycles because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he does it. He does it in a way where he's he he plants the seed. He plants the seed there and he watches, he watches it grow. He watches it grow. And so it's important for us to learn how to not be so quick to respond, quick to act, quick to just do. We have to be silent and allow God to fight our battles. Amen. So one thing I come into realization is that God is bigger. God is bigger than anything. God is big enough to do it. God is big enough to fight 
your battle. He's big enough. And so the song that I was just that I was just uh, playing earlier talks about um, um, fighting a battle that God has never lost. about is one of my favorite songs it always reminds me of when i've gone through hard times in my life how god still fought the battle even though physically it didn't seem like a battle it didn't seem like the battle was won it didn't seem like the battle was won and so i love this song the song says who are you great mountain that you shall not bow low jesus defeated the darkness he has never lost a battle. And so that's something I hold on to because in my life, it may seem to people that God has lost some battles, but spiritually, kingdom, in the kingdom, God, God does not, he, he can't lose. He doesn't, he doesn't have anybody that's in on the same rank as, as him. God is in a rank all by himself. There's no one that's above him. There's no one beside him. There's no one that can compare to him. There's nobody like God. And because there's nobody like God, we have to understand that only it's only God that can fight our battles. And I'm going to tell you guys <clears throat> that the only way that God can fight our battles is by the word of God. The Bible says that God make haste. He hastened to perform his word. And because he hastened to perform his word, then we should be always declaring the word of God, especially when we come up against the battle, especially if you have somebody that wants to come up against you and they they're accusing you, making accusations against you. You have people that want to uh, just want to beat you down and make you feel lesser, lesser than you have people that don't want to see you do well. And I'm not even just talking about people, but these are spirits that are behind these people. It's darkness that are in these people that that have that want them to see people not do well because humanly humanly i don't i don't want to see anybody do bad i want to see everybody do good and i feel like when you're in your right mind you want to see that but that's why it's important for us to take on the mind of christ because when we don't take on the mind of christ then we start being envious and jealous you know and jealous and don't want to see this person doing better than us and all that kind of stuff so we need the word of God. This is how God fights off even in us because we have battles within us that we fight daily. We have mental battles. We have physical battles that we fight on a day to day basis. But that's why it's important. We need the word of God to fight. And so Exodus 15 and 6 says, your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power, your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Your right hand, O Lord shatters the enemy god shatters the enemy that listen i believe that if we come into a, a realization or a greater understanding just how mighty god is and just how powerful he is then we it'll be easy for us to sit back and let god be god let god be god in your life in in the battle in whatever it is you're facing it doesn't matter if you're facing sickness it doesn't matter if you're facing challenges within your family. It doesn't matter if you're facing things in your marriage. It doesn't even matter if you're facing um, disagreements or just crazy situations that you may be having with your children. So we need the word of God. There are some fights that God wants us to be very vocal. And when I say vocal, I'm talking about being loud. And I'm not talking about being loud to people, but I'm talking about being loud in prayer. There are some battles that require for us to be very vocal in prayer very vocal so you guys know that there's a difference when we pray there may be a time to pray to intercede there may be a time to warfare and there just may be a time where you just simply just worship the lord god almighty hallelujah and so the time that we need to fight the battle the times that we we need to be vocal we have to we have to open up our mouth. It's no, listen, when somebody's all in your face and y'all can, y'all can probably relate to this before Christ, before, before my BC days, before I received God, I remember a time where I would, listen, I wouldn't back down for nobody who, who made it known that they, that they wanted to fight me. I would not back down. 
you never see a person who's who's engaging in a fight you never see a person that's engaging in a fight be quiet you never see a person engaging in battle just being timid just being passive just being shy remember just praying in a loud voice god right now in the name of jesus i arrest every spirit of anxiety right now that wants to cause confusion in my mind, that causes me to be anxious in my body. I come against you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that all of your works are destroyed and you are defeated in Jesus' mighty name. And so when you declare those scriptures, you're not, you're not timid. You're not, and God, we just, we just thank you, God, and we just pray, God, that you would do you would defeat the devil and you God is not coming back down. Jesus is not coming back um, from from the right hand of the father to come and fight a battle that he already won years ago. What he wants us to do as people of God, he wants us to enforce his word. So when we enforce his word, we're enforcing the, the victory. That's good right there. I'm going to say that again. When we enforce God's word, we are enforcing victory that was already won years ago. We are enforcing the victory. We are enforcing the victor. We are enforcing our victory that was won years ago, 2,000 years ago. We have to enforce that. And so that's why you guys may see me drive it home. You may see me tell y'all, y'all, we need this word. We need to worship God. We need the word of God. And I'm telling y'all this because there are times I try to live outside of the word of God. I remember this young lady asked me, how have you made it so far after losing a child? After all the stuff you shared with me that you dealt with in your childhood, how did you make it through? And I told her, by the word of God, I don't mean to sound cliche. I don't mean to sound like a, a churchy girl. I don't mean to sound, you get what I'm saying? Like, like, like this is just, you know, um, I don't know, just to sound real religious or like, you get what I'm saying? Because sometimes we can make things, we can overcomplicate things. We can make things seem harder than what they are. But the truth is, I told her the only way I've gotten through with what I, the battles I've overcome was just by the word of God. The Bible declares that it's in God that we live, move, and have our being. Y'all hear that? It's in God. It's not in myself. I can't do nothing without God. I'm here to tell y'all that I can't do nothing without God. You can't do nothing without God. You can strive to, but it'll be hard. And so it's like, what's the point of trying to do things without God when we can take the easy way? Now, I'm not saying that things are going to be easy peasy, but you have help. Your present help comes from the Lord. God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. So I'm reminded we have to be vocal when it comes to prayer. We don't have to be vocal and loud and, ag and aggressive, you know, in public or to people when somebody done, done pissed us off or when somebody has rubbed us the wrong way or when somebody has offended us. We don't need to be vocal that way. Confront things. You have to talk about things and friction is good. It's good sometimes, but there may be other times that God will tell you, be silent. Let me fight the battle. I need you to be quiet. Don't you say a word. I don't even need you to defend yourself. I don't need you to tell your side of the story. I don't need you to tell what they did. I only need you to be silent and I will fight the battle. I will fight the battle. So we know, number one, that God fights our battle when we're silent. Number two, we know that God fights our battle when we enforce his when we enforce his word. When we enforce the word of God, God fights our battle by the by enforcing his word. Because when we enforce his word, we're enforcing victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I want to talk about even the scripture, Exodus um, 17, how Moses was coming against the enemy, how how he came against Amalek which was the enemy. And he told Joshua and them to go get the, the army, go get the army man, because we're about to go up for battle. And so Aaron and her went up with Moses to go stand up with Moses. And Moses, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to bring my rod. I'm going to stand up here. And so he realized that his army started losing. His army 
started losing. And so what happens is Aaron and and her, I'm probably pronouncing um, the guy's name wrong, but her and Aaron saw that Moses was getting tired and they, they told him to sit on this rock and they both, one, her was on one side and Aaron was on the other side and they held up Moses' hand so that they could defeat the enemy, so that they could defeat the enemy. Hallelujah. And so as he did that, that just reminded me that how to how to allow God to fight your battle is through worship. Through worship, through reverence, through adoration. Hallelujah, through relationship with God. Hallelujah. So you understand that God fights our battle in his presence while we're in his presence God is fighting hallelujah so you can go check that out yourself it's Exodus 17 where Moses lifted up his hands and they won the battle so I'm encouraging you today get in your position position yourself for battle position yourself for battle you position yourself to shut your mouth close your mouth hush your mouth you position yourself in battle to be vocal in prayer so when I say shut your mouth, I'm talking about shutting your mouth to be loud and obnoxious to people and letting people know, you know, you don't have to let anybody know anything when you have God that's on your side. God is for you. God is more than a whole world against you. So you just need to be silent. Shut your mouth. Don't don't tell them you're going to tell them off. You're going to go off on them. God don't need you to do that. But the only time you need to be vocal is when you're in prayer. Coming against that spirit that's in that's at work in that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the third thing that we ought to do to allow God to fight our battle is we need to worship him. We have to create an atmosphere of worship in our homes. We have to create an atmosphere of worship just just being a, just living a lifestyle of worship. Hallelujah. We have to live a lifestyle of worship. We have to live it. That's the only way we can, God can fight. God can fight. Because let me tell you something. God already won the battle. And I know we say a lot of cliche things, but God has already won the battle. But he, when we enforce his word, then the fight is automatically won. He's, in, he's, in, we're enforcing his victory, the victory that he won and then he gives it to us and makes us victorious hallelujah and that's why i love this scripture where it says but thanks be unto god who causes us to triumph thanks be unto god who always he don't causes us to triumph sometime but he always causes us to, to triumph even if it looks like we didn't win we still win even if it doesn't look like we have not won we still win Hallelujah. You guys understand that we're 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 in the flesh. We're in this body, but this earth that we're on is temporal. We're here. We're just passing by. We're passengers. We're passengers just passing by. This is not our forever home. Hallelujah. This is not our forever place. People have created a lifestyle where they're they're they they get so comfortable and and just living the way that they're living but i'm here to tell y'all that i myself i can't continue to live life that i the way that i've always lived it i know that there's better i know that there's more to god than what i've experienced and so my pursuit of god is the thing that i'm going to continue i'm going to continue to pursue after god so i can experience more of his glory more of the full manifestation of his glory i don't have to wait until i get to heaven i don't have to wait till i see the glory of god when i make heaven to to, to live a life to live um to live fully and what God has called me to live. Hallelujah. So I'm encouraging you today. Whatever it is you need. Whatever you are, you're expect, you want God to fight for you. Silence your mouth. Go and pray. You have to understand your enemy. Your enemies are not people. Your enemy is not people. Your enemy are is the devil. And his imps. People don't like to talk about the devil. 
But how can you strategize against the devil and you don't even know him? You don't even know the enemy that you're up against. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God came so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I decree and declare over each and every one of you today. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, God. God, that you fight every battle, God. So we submit ourselves to you. We submit our beings to you. We submit our mind, body, soul, and spirit to you, God. God, because we recognize, oh God, that you are Lord, that you are king, that you are sovereign, that you're omnipresent, that you're everywhere at the same time. God, we thank you. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge you as Lord. We acknowledge you as Savior. We acknowledge you as the creator, the maker of heaven and earth. God, we thank you today, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that your word declares, oh God, that you will teach our hands to war, God, and you will teach our fingers to fight in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, that your word declares, oh God. Ah, we thank you today but they're mighty through the pulling down of every stronghold we thank you god that our fight is not worldly our fight is not carnal but our fight is spiritual in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth so we decree and declare god that our eyes are open to the enemy our eyes are open to the enemy god because your word declares oh god that you will not have us ignorant to the devices of the enemy so i decree and declare to each and every one of us that our eyes will be open to darkness our eyes will be open to the works of the enemy. Our eyes will be fixed on Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. And as our eyes are fixed on Jesus, he is fighting every battle. He is fighting every war in the mighty name of Jesus. Even the battles that you have in your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. He's fighting those mental battles. He's fighting those traumas. He's fighting the battles that you even wage war in your mind. Traumatic. Even as children that you keep replaying over and over in your mind in the mighty name of Jesus I decree and declare right now that you that God is erasing every traumatic experience in the mighty name of Jesus that has caused you trauma that has caused you bitterness in your body that has caused you to walk in unforgiveness that has caused you to be anger and bitter towards people that has caused you to just be even sickly in your body in the mighty name of Jesus I decree and declare that that God is removing the veil from your eyes right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that God is even removing the plugs out of your ears so that you can hear him clearly in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to your heart right now that God is giving you a heart of flesh, that he's removing the stony heart, that he's removing the, 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 the shield that you keep over your heart to protect yourself. I decree and declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus that God is your defender that God is your shield and buck let it be called Shataya in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I decree and declare that God fights for you that God fights for you in the mighty name of Jesus I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that each and every one of us we will submit in the name of Jesus we will we will submit greater we will submit to a greater degree in the mighty name of Jesus God we wholeheartedly submit to you God I submit my heart to you God I submit my pain to you God I submit my mental oh God mindset to you God I submit the hurt God I submit the trauma to you God I submit God in the name of Jesus my being oh God the brokenness God I submit to you God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth oh God I bit oh God the anger I submit oh God to you the anger God that I'm dealing with oh God I submit it to you God in the mighty name of Jesus oh God everything that I am God everything oh God that we come to be God in the name of Jesus we lay ourselves out oh God on the altar God in the name of Jesus and we ask today God that you consume us oh God you consume us with your mighty burning fire oh God you consume us oh God God you consume us oh God and create in us oh God a clean heart oh God and renew the right spirit within us oh God in the mighty name of Jesus 
Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you today. We thank you, God, that you are a healer. You are a healer today, God, I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that because your presence is here with us, that you are present with us, oh God, we thank you. I decree and declare, God, I employ the healing of God right now, God. We employ the healing of God to touch each and every person here, God, that needs to be healed, oh God, from deep hurts, from deep wounds, deep wounds that they don't talk about, deep wounds that they don't even want to think about, but they replay over and over and over in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. I just sense that the Lord wants to heal. So I'm just encouraging you to open up your heart. Open up your heart wherever you are. Open up your heart and receive the healer. Receive the balm of Gilead. Receive the healer because he's here today. He's here today. He's here today. Hallelujah. So I just need each of you to make a prophetic declaration over yourself. We always do these affirmations and I believe affirmations are so important. I want you to close your eyes and if you're driving, don't close your eyes. I want you to begin to affirm yourself in God's word. So I want you to just repeat after me, say, God, you are my healer. Heal me. God, you are my healer. Heal me. You are my healer. Heal me. Heal my heart. Heal my heart, Lord. Mmm. Mmm. Jesus. need some of y'all to just tap in tap in God is here to heal you today he's here to heal you he's here to heal you to peel back those layers ah hallelujah heal Lord yeah heal Lord mm. hallelujah Hallelujah. And I want y'all to just repeat after me even with this because I'm sensing that we have to have a heart of repentance. Say, God, I repent for walking in healing. I mean, I'm sorry. I repent for walking in hurt, pain, Come on, repeat after me. Say, God, I repent for allowing hurt and pain to keep me in bondage. Say, I repent. I repent for walking in unforgiveness towards 
the people that did wrong to me. I repent. Come on. You guys understand that in order for God to heal you, you have to forgive the perpetrator. You have to forgive whoever has wronged you. You have to forgive. Hallelujah. God has God says if you can't forgive, then I can't for, I can't let you, you can't come into the kingdom. He can't let you in because you, you have to let people go. Forgiveness is for you. It's for you, for your freedom. It's for you to be free. Not that they got away. Not that they got away with what they did. But forgiveness is for you. Hallelujah. So if you're ready for that, some of y'all may not be ready for that. And that's okay. But I'm going to pray for your heart because that just means that there's still a layer. A layer of just hurt, brokenness that you're still holding on to fear some of us walk in fear fear of that somebody's gonna hurt us again or do us wrong again like we've already experienced so just declare those scriptures god i repent for walking in unforgiveness i repent for allowing myself to be in bondage The Bible declares that he who the sun sets free is free indeed. 